So the next lie that Satan loves to tell women is if you are single at a certain age, you're doing it wrong. And that is completely a lie. So um, I've definitely heard some quotes and things. And one of the ones that I've heard a while back was, I would rather not be married than to be married to someone who is not a true believer in Christ and who is not leading a life led for and by God. Um, and I totally stand behind that because if you're rushing to get married, you're rushing to be in a relationship, you're rushing this, rushing that, you're going to want to go down your own path and not down God's path for you. And um, I've got some references about what God says about singleness for us women and um, how we can combat Satan's lies in our lives. So my first place I want you guys to go is 2 Corinthians um, 6, 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Um, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. Um, so that's a definite example of Christ being united with the church. That's a definite example of um, basically the wedding ceremony of Christ being united to his church. Um, he will raise us up and basically teach us and guide us in his ways so that we are made perfect and blameless to be presented to him as what a marriage symbolizes. So yeah, singleness is not a problem. I want you all to kind of get that out of your head that singleness is a problem and that you should be at a certain point at a certain age because the Lord has great things in store for you and he wants the best for you. So waiting is just waiting for his gift coming towards you and his blessings that are coming towards you. And we got to be okay with um, accepting what he has planned, whether it's marriage and whether it's not marriage. So the Lord will place the desire for marriage into your heart and then he will fulfill that desire for you. I don't want you to think that, oh, um, I am, I'm late or I'm running out of time. I don't want you all to think that because um, that's a destructive mindset that Satan uses to capture the children of God and um, just basically play with our minds and say lies and basically destroy us. So I don't want you all to be held captive by that because the Lord has conquered Satan and he will fulfill your needs. So always remember that. Um, the next place that I want you all to go is uh, Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33. Here we go. So, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So, um, seek first the kingdom of God in your life, and everything will be added to you. Everything that you need, everything that is a righteous desire in your heart placed there by the Lord will be added unto you. Um, so there's no need to worry about your future. There's no need to worry about um, your future spouse. Pray for it. I read this quote one time where it said, if you are, if your mind keeps wandering towards something while you are praying, maybe you should be praying for that thing that your mind keeps wandering to. And it really stuck with me because a lot of times my mind wanders when I'm praying for certain things, especially my future husband. Um, so I know that when my mind starts to wander to praying and thinking about my future husband, I need to be praying for him first and foremost and um, for the Lord's hand to be working in that direction and in that area in my life because... If your mind's wandering to something, you're often thinking about it, which can lead to worry or anxiety and stuff like that, that we don't want to be dealing with, that we can just give to the Lord fully in prayer. So, yeah, let's go to the next verse reference that I have here. Um, Genesis 2.18. Genesis 2.18. Uh, 
um, here we go. The Lord said, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So obviously the Lord made us women. And um, yeah, it's not good for man to be alone. So therefore it's not good for woman to be alone. And um, for various reasons that I don't have to go into. But um, the Lord would love to see those who he has called and placed the righteous desire for marriage into their heart. He would love to see those ones married. And you will know if um, your desire for marriage has been placed there righteously by looking into your heart and your intentions with getting married and wanting to be married and wanting to be in a relationship. What are your intentions with it? If you have good, genuine, God-fearing, um, God-respecting um, intentions to glorify the Lord with asking him to put you into a relationship or into a marriage with a godly man. That's a desire placed there by the Lord. So you have to trust the Lord to fulfill that for you in your life. Um, and that's all I can really say about it. I do want to go to one more verse. Um, Song of Solomon 2.7. And I know Song of Solomon can be a weird book to read, but we're going to go there for a little bit. Um, Song of Solomon 2, verse 7. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field. Do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. So don't be trying to force anybody to be in a relationship with you. Don't be trying to change somebody to make them into who you want them to be for the relationship that you want in your life. Don't try and do that because it ultimately leads to heartbreak, a lot of emotional attachment and a lot of emotional brokenness and you don't want to go through that in your life at this early age or at whatever age so don't even try to arouse it or awaken it before it so desires because ultimately love is from God and love is for God and you don't want um, to be projecting something onto somebody or into somebody else's life that is not there okay so yeah, that's what I really wanted to bring into um, that second lie. Let's move on to the third one.